Good morning. Uh, this is going to be a, um, another day of um, innovation and exploration. We have invited a friend and a guest artist and Moorpark student and graduate of UC Santa Cruz in philosophy and I couldn't even begin to tell you all his other accomplishments. But our friend, Derek Franz, is going to share with you some of his um, art explorations. Uh, you've seen his work around campus, the big metal sculptures, the big multimedia things, all the things that catch your eye around the campus, that's the work of Derek. Uh, but what you haven't seen probably as much of is some of his electronic stuff and some of his computer generated stuff. So, um, you know, we spent the semester talking about art and inspiration and maybe this will inspire you. So, uh, Derek. Thank you for coming. Derek Franz, um, sculptor, uh, ceramic artist, um, electronic artist, uh, metal artist. It's all yours. So, I guess the beginning for me would be uh, I was in uh, Antigua and Guatemala. I had been to Santa Cruz for a semester two for my first computer art class. We made little animals out of motors and uh, I was ready for something new. There's this programming language called Max that was coming out. It's been out for a while, it was getting better and better all the time, more people writing objects for it. It was an uh, interactive computer art and music programming. And I said to myself, I gotta make something cool, I gotta make a body suit, I gotta make something that I can telepathically communicate. Um, music group. So that thing turned out to be a performance <coughs> where I've got sensors on my body. I'm um, going like this. The sounds are changing, the sounds are going up. I'm moving my arms. I've got little data pads on my fingers, home brewed, just pieces of copper, snapping them together, and then it's connected to a soldered keyboard. So that K is going off, and K is told to play a sound, K is told to change the arrangement. This guy in the background is supposed to be my avatar. He's supposed to be the guy that I'm controlling. This is maybe about six, seven years ago. Who knows? It's using things that are like serial cables, CTR monitors, old stuff. I've got an old part computer that's got me about 20 wires going to it. And excuse the sound, I can't hear anything. We'll try to keep it visual today. So it was just fun because you didn't really have to be imposing, all you were was just movement. And it was making sound, it was making video. And I'll show you where that's gone since then. Hopefully you can hear enough. High pitch sounds can hear pretty well. I went to New York. I was resident for 2008 in a place called Harvard Harvest Works Harvest Harvest Digital Media Center. I'd say they're like the only place in America that students are good at making computers and, and art. That you can go there and get a couple thousand dollars just to hang out. I started inventing uh, light sculptures that the computer could interact with. You play the camera on something like this, and everything that's alive, everything that's a light will start having a geometry between it and depending on where it is in the camera field will make a different sound. So if this had it on it, you might see tethers between all the different centers. Uh, it's all software I made myself using principles of clumping, which is just like you have a list of every, every bright spot and then you run it through and every time there's two spots then you just average them and say that that's gotten a potency of two now. So after a while, thousands of spots later, every second, you got something that's simple, something that's at least, you know, three or four places. So transferring pixels into something that's more human. And you make this, I make this for light sculpture, and then I turn it on the computer screen, and I can play it as an instrument through the feedback. Light from the computer generation is on the screen, is causing the computer generation, and you can get melodies and rhythms. I'll try to find the one place that's got a really good example. Towards the 
into the slime, I just put my face on it. Into the subtle movement. What am I doing? Not much. Causing dark, causing light, causing sound. So I'm going to be showing you programs in a while, but I'm going to try to run you through a gamut of principles of electronic art. See if, uh, if it's too fast for you, you tell me, but I don't know. I've got tons of stuff I can show you, so we're going to try to make it fast. It starts with kinetic art. Kinetic art is motion in art. Started with a guy named Gabo in Russia where he just took a piece of metal wire, put a motor on it, and then all of a sudden a boring flaccid thing was spinning and it had a node right here just from the length of the wire and the speed of the movement. And so you see something, it looks like it's got shape and form, looks like a vase, but it's just a piece of wire. So if it's controlled by a motor or if you connect it to people around you or a sound or wind, motion, a stir bridge is kind of kinetic art. So if you ever seen um, bearing shafts, they just make frictionless movement. They're on wheel bed arrows, laser suits, which are just turntables, bike wheels, you got an extra bike wheel, you got kinetic art. Marcel Duchamp made the first kinetic art piece in Europe. You just put a bike wheel upside down, spin it, it's kind of hypnotic. It's kind of mundane, but it was all about the idea. This thing on the corner is a mirror wheel. If you go back to the kill area, you can spin it. It's not kind of my trip yet because your reflection is just going past you over and over and over. This thing inside it is circuit boards connected to um, car park reflectors from tow trucks. So this is set up so that you press the different connections and the wires go to the lights. So it's kind of like a turntable for a light. I'll show you what those circuit boards look like. This is on campus for a while. Just took two of those bearing rings, put it on a big shaft, welded all these things to it, poles connected to aluminum, connected to plastic. That's where I've been taking my welding art lately, is kind of integrating other things that are held by the metal. Metals, you know, people think it's kind of industrial looking, so if you incorporate other materials <laughs> and use the metal as an armature, it works pretty good. Best of both worlds. This thing right here is a bicycle wheel with a piece of metal that's clamped. <coughs> all you have to do, since it's uh, aluminum, it's kind of a different world than steel, so all you do is you clamp a piece of metal around it, and then all of a sudden you can make industrial sized spokes, and you got to weld that when it's clamped. The cool thing about welding is if you can place things in a certain position, as, as fragile and intimidating and wonky as it is, as long as you can weld it, and hold it in that position for that time, and it's kind of permanent. Here's that body suit. It's got uh, flex sensors. Flex sensors are resistors. Resistors are the simplest thing in electronics. All they are is a, a value, like high to low. So these are set up so that when I flex, the resistance is kind of like it's clenched. The particles are closer together. More electricity can flow through it. Computers know how to read that. And you're used to doing it every day. If you ever touch a stereo, you turn in the dials, turn in the knobs. Those are one of the easiest types of uh, flat, or resistor called a tensioner. Here's a glove with uh, that sandwich switch. Glow represents wants energy. Positive amount represents has energy. Snap them together, electricity goes past. Just a simple button. Here's the principles for making a, a control system with, with copper. You just set up a cone, and then you have all these outputs. Running your finger past all of them just sends energy to different places. You can do it circular, you can do it straight. <coughs> Here's a chronological list of uh, all the designs for circuits I've done, which is on copper board. You take a copper board, you place a disgusting, gooey lacquer on it, and then you place it in acid, and then it eats away all the copper except for what you save. A double swirl lets you make a button. One's got energy, the other one wants energy. Here's the one just making a circle. I color coded it so you know the difference between the buttons and the energy. This one's more of an animation. 